anti-colonialism so that you know, multinational NGOs really have a hard time coming in and making change. Um, and so if we can focus on local grassroots or organizations, so sort of a bottom-up strategy, um, then we can sort of hopefully make greater change, greater impact. And this sort of goes back to the idea of um, doing more research into smaller organizations and entrepreneurs through the uh, Ecology Fellows Program. Um, and so also we sort of want to um, address just the education being given. I mean, in the question sort of asks, um, is the education being provided at this point effective? And something that we sort of feel is that um, at this point in time, there needs to sort of be something, uh, the education needs to be complemented with sort of um, practical skills and also really trying to maybe fund entrepreneurs and their, um, you know, efforts to be educated and to create um, opportunities for people in their country. So this would address the brain drain that goes on in developing countries. So I think a lot of people talk about uh, so far, the short-term impact, and we provide education, but where does that go? Well, a lot of times, historically, we've found um, that when these students are educated, especially if it's one or two students, well, there's an opportunity for them in their own country, so it's in their best interest to leave. And this has no long-term impact for that country. So we really want to make sure that not only are we providing education in the sense of, you know, maybe sciences and that sort of thing, but we're really also trying to fund education and entrepreneurship, creating opportunities that would keep um, educated students in those countries to create long-term growth. Um, and so just some of the research to back this up, um, actually he spoke at the Social Impact Conference and he sort of inspired a lot of these ideas. It was Iqbal Zikadar from the MIT Lugatum Center for Development and Entrepreneurship. And he really talks about the most important quote would be that small entrepreneurs create jobs, products, and services that form the bedrock of flourishing democracies. And so this really connects back to what I was talking about before, is that we need to focus on a bottom-up structure in a lot of those countries where you can't access from the other way around. And in doing this, hopefully we can decentralize power from the governments um, and put more power into the hands of the people who can have more opportunities to offer to the educated students, which is Gribology's main effort at the moment, so that we can create long-term growth in these countries as opposed to the short-term results that we're having at the moment. Also, I think something really important to point out is, 
you know, you're saying, well, this is the most difficult environment to work in. So then, I mean, in my personal opinion, that means that's where I should be going. I think that just because it's difficult doesn't provide any reasoning why that shouldn't be the focus. For example, something outlined in the, you know, in the ufology materials was that it's very difficult with some of the countries that don't have the necessary technology tools. Well, then it should be ufology's mission to try and hopefully provide those tools. So I don't see the difficulty as a reason to stray away. I think it's a reason to embrace and to try and find it. about the same thing. Um, so my question uh, has to do with, so when you think about a country like that, you know, where things are maybe a little more challenging, maybe there are forces that are kind of purposely keeping things at status quo, and you want them to come in and you want to drive change, but, you know, for some reason, let's say, like, civil war was going on, just there was no way to do things. Or, you know, something like that. I mean, do you feel like you're almost fighting more than you can as far as what the underlying problems are? I think that's why we decided to keep the focus on the individuals with sort of like the micro side. Um, because like you said, like it might be very difficult for an NGO to really establish itself and do a lot of uh, good work in that country if it's facing like civil war or other problems. But if we could you know, impact just one or two students even, like that could make a change and provide some stability to the lives of just a small number of also, I would say, well, I can't necessarily address your point on civil war, um, but I will say, in terms of the, you know, the government, um, you know, yes, the government in some way, shape, or form can a lot of times really um, create a situation where you, you really sort of feel like you can't do anything. Um, but the way to get around that, we feel, is you need to decentralize the power. So if you're not funding entrepreneurs, you're not creating opportunities where money is shifted and power is shifted um, through, like, trade or creating a business, you know, um, then there's, that's the only way to really decentralize that power. So we really feel that it's not impossible, and there's definitely ways to work around that by finding, again, these individuals going from underneath to bottom up. Um, and for example, you know, um, there's uh, the, the man who also um, you know, started the Legatum Center, I believe he also really knows Greece Pies for coming up with some idea, in which you know, he's uh, providing loans, um, you know, not to governments, he's providing the loans to the entrepreneurs and you know, the people underneath. Uh, you know, to build up, so. So we'll look at it.